all right here we go again with another quick video this is just breaking down some basics about some of the bones that tend to give people a lot of drama uh, what I have done is I've actually taken one of the skulls that can be taken apart Shh, don't tell anybody in our department because they don't like you taking these skulls apart but I'm gonna tell you right now if you can find a skull that you can disarticulate in other words take the skull apart man do it because it's almost like playing with jigsaw puzzle pieces if you can figure out how the pieces go together then you can figure out a lot about the actual details on the bone I try to tell people all the time look what you need to do is you need to learn the different individual bones first then once you learn all the individual bones then you'll be able to learn all the individual details because you'll know how the details actually connect to one another if you've been looking at this video for the last minute trying to figure out uh, which bone is which then that's a great thing as a matter of fact what I would probably do if I were you is after you watch this video actually before you finish watching this video stop this video now rewind it back and for the next and for the first 60 seconds of this video try to name each bone I'll show you Now, of course, I know what you're thinking. Well, you know, those bones, they're kind of turned in a really weird position. Well, that's just the trick. That's just the key. That's why you want to get a hold of one of these disarticulated skulls so you can turn them around and put them in different perspectives so that you can view it and be able to figure out the different details and the different sides. As a matter of fact, some of these bones uh, are actually one from a pair. So you want to try to figure out which of these bones are, are you know, the left or the right for example this bone right here this guy hopefully you know what he is anybody guess hope you do hopefully uh, and I won't tell you what the bone is as a matter of fact I think I'll just be evil here for a minute and I'll point out some of the details on this bone ah whatever uh, this is a temporal bone so we can see the mastoid process here we can see the mastoid process which is here remember your sternocleidomastoid muscle attaches to this this is that knot in the back of your head the, well, the one that's behind your ear that's what that knob is of course that hole some people refer to that hole as the external auditory meatus and then this extension right here that I'm holding in between my thumb and my finger happens to be a process known as the zygomatic process. It's the process that is named for the bone that it actually articulates with or attaches to. So this zygomatic process attaches to the temporal process on the zygomatic bone and the two of them go on to create a bridge which is a combination between their two processes and that bridge is known as the zygomatic arch that little spine looking thing there is the styloid process now if we put him back there's our temporal bone anybody know if it's a left or right I'll give you three seconds that's right it's a right it's a right temporal bone so this would go on the right side of your head this bone right here hopefully you guessed that this is a sphenoid bone Sphenoid bone is the bat bone. Looks like a big bat with big wings. If we were looking into the skull, we removed the roof of the skull and looked inside of the skull, this would be a superior view into the skull. We can see the greater wings which go out to here, and then we can see the lesser wings which go out to here. Here's the Sela Tersica, which is the infamous Turkish saddle, which is right there. Um, if we flip this bone around, we'll see that the sides here are actually the same sides uh, that we oftentimes point at near the temple of your head. 
and then these sides right here are actually the back of your um, orbits or the uh, back of your eye sockets. Moving right along, we got the ethmoid bone, which looks like a peach pit. This thing right here is the crystal gali. That's the guy that projects into the open cavern of the skull. Your brain sits just behind it and above it. You'll probably see this later on in your anatomy and physiology class. This little surface right here, the reason why it's so perforated is because you have olfactory nerve fibers that run through that hole and then protrude out through this bottom portion or post um, inferior portion of the ethmoid bone and those little nerve fibers have little receptors here that pick up molecules in the air that allow you to smell. Believe it or not, humans, we only have um, receptors in the superior portion of our nasal cavity. We don't have it all over our nasal cavity. The, the only place where you can smell is actually up there in that upper portion of your nasal cavity. The rest of that stuff is just producing snot. Um, in a dog, they've got receptors all over their nasal cavity. That's why they go nuts when you let them out of the car when you get to the park. They can smell everything. This guy is kind of a tricky question because actually this is uh, four bones here. Well, okay, I'll be honest. It's actually six. You can't see two of the six. The first two are the ones that you probably guessed right off the bat, which are the maxillae. Here's a maxillary bone and there's a maxillary bone. They both make up our upper jaw. But then when you look up here, you probably said, ha ha, Mr. Nixon, yo, check this out. Look it out. We got two bones right here. Yeah, these two bones are nasal bones. So these are not part of your maxillae. Uh, actually, these two are your nasal bones right there. So when someone breaks their nose, that's why the tape goes over here and not way down here because everything that comes out in this area is all cartilage anyway. So what you're actually breaking are these two little bones and it's actually very easy to break those two bones. You ladies who take self-defense classes, you know about that. But if I flip this model around, I find two more bones. I find this bone right here. This is a lacrimal bone. And the lacrimal bone is found just above uh, this lacrimal duct. This, of course, is where the tear, uh, the tear glands are placed. Now, you know, I just realized that I lied. Because these are two bones. And these are two bones, the two nasal bones. And then these two lac uh, lacrimal bones are two bones. Guess what? This model actually has two more to make eight. These L-shaped bones, the palatine bones. There's a palatine bone here. And there's a palatine bone here. And it's easy to remember the name of these bones because the palatine bones help make the roof of your mouth or your palate. Moving right over to here, we've got our friend the mandible. We've only got one of these. We can see the condylar process, which is right here, which articulates with the uh, mandibular fossa that would be on our temporal bone, which when we combine this process with that fossa that gives us our TMJ, temporal mandibular joint, We've got our frontal bone. Yeah, when I stand him up like this, of course he looks like the frontal bone. When you flip him back down, you're like, what in the world am I looking at? This is an alien head. But if you flip it over like this, then you can see the entirety of the frontal bone. They say that you can actually tell different ethnicities on a skull based on how sloped the frontal bone happens to be. So uh, particular different ethnicities, we have different sloping to that frontal bone. You can see here, if you look very closely, this model is not very articulated, but you'll see that little tiny hole. That little tiny hole is actually, a, um, it's not very clear, but they're trying to show you what's commonly a notch or a foramen. There's usually a hole that's right there and it's called the supraorbital foramen. Supra meaning superior, orbital referring to the orbit or eye socket, Foramen meaning a canal that something important passes through. 
Um, that superorbital foramen is important to me because uh, I was playing uh, football and unfortunately we were playing without helmets and mouthpieces and in a bad tackling accident I had a guy's front teeth go straight through uh, this area on my eyebrow and it severed the artery that passes through that foramen had you know blood everywhere it was pretty un pretty so to speak we've got a vomer here vomer is pretty interesting if you were looking in someone's nose from a frontal view, just looking straight into their nose, this is what you would see. You would see the vomer. Looking at it from the side, this is how the vomer is resting from a lateral view. If you did a sagittal cut of that person's face, this is what it would look like from a lateral view. And the vomer is one of the bones that helps make up your nasal septum. Over here, we've got a bone that really gets to people. This is a zygomatic bone. It doesn't look like much until you bring it over here to his friend and then attach. And we're going to see how good I am at attaching this bone with one hand. And I suck. Okay. All right. So basically, the bone attaches or articulates just like this. There are three processes on the zygomatic bone. Each process is named for what it attaches to. So this process is the maxillary process. Notice that it's attaching to the maxillary bone. You have this process right here, which actually attaches to the frontal bone here. And then you have the temporal process which actually attaches to the temporal bone. So it's not bad. It's not a bad bone. It's just when you lie it on a table and then put stickers on it and say, hey, label this, it drives people nuts. But you have to kind of see the bone uh, articulated with what it attaches to. So if you had a visual, you'd put him here and you'd put this here and you would put this here. In other words, this process would attach to this bone, the temporal bone. This process would attach to this bone, frontal process to the frontal bone. And then this process would attach to this bone, which would be the maxillary process attaching to the maxillary bone. And then our last bone here would be the occipital bone, which doesn't really look like much sometimes until you pay close attention to that humongous hole that's sitting there. That's our foramen magnum, which of course the spinal cord passes through. But not only that, but you've got the occipital condyles, which allows your head to be able to pivot and rock back and forth. So when you're saying, yes, I understand exactly what you're saying, then yeah, that's what you have the condos for. And that's a wrap.